Okay, welcome back everyone. On uh, today's video, we're finally getting around to making these cold frames for the garden. Uh, that time of year is coming, we need to start getting some soil warmed up for some early plantings. So we've got wood, scrap wood from some crates at work once again. Um, and we've measured the section of bed is 40 inches wide by 20 feet long. So we're gonna do three cold frames, 40 inches wide, uh, six and a half feet long, so they'll fit fine. Um, so we've already cut these to six and a half feet long, and these pieces are 40 inches wide. There's a wooden barrier, I guess, around the gardens to contain the soil, and they're about six inches deep, which is the width of these boards. So I'm doing another six inches, and I'm just gonna taper it from the edge to the center, and I'll do two lids on top, so you can open half either side. Uh, we can ac access it from both sides in the garden. So instead of trying to reach 40 inches into it when you're doing your planting or checking on your plants, it'll be easier to do from one side or the other. So I got one more piece to cut on this taper and all I've done for that, I'm using the table saw and I'm just gonna eyeball it to keep the line straight with the blade because your rip fences and stuff don't go on an angle. Uh, I cut all of this ahead of time. Everybody knows what it looks like to cut a piece of wood, so you didn't need to see all of that. Uh, but I'll give you an idea of what I'm talking about here. table saw, especially if you have these anti-kickback teeth that grab into the wood, you really want to make sure that your line that you're going to cut looks like you're parallel with that blade. Once you get to those teeth, there's no way you can pull this back out and move it around. And you don't want it binding on your blade when you're cutting anyhow. So there's our last one of those that we had to cut. And to attach all of this together, I went back to our scrap wood bins and got some small strips of wood that I'm gonna just attach on the corners of these so it's a little bit thicker to screw everything together in the corners. So I'm gonna do some more work on assembly of the frame piece and then we need to figure out what we're gonna do for a center beam uh, so that when we put the tops on, we have something to hinge them to to be able to open them. So we'll do some. Okay, so we've got our assembly done. Uh, we put the little blocks of wood underneath in here to make this a little bit thicker so I had something to attach to. Uh, nailed a couple of nails and screws, whatever, just old stuff that I could find around. Slap the ends on. So we got that done. We put a ridge beam down the center so we have something if we want to hinges, hinges on uh, the tops. We have something to attach the hinges to. There's lots of different designs I guess out there for cold frames. People have used the PVC hooks, scrap wood, whatever. This was easy for me to get and it was free so there was no point in buying uh, PVC piping or anything like that. The plastic you got to buy no matter what you're using so I had to buy the rolled plastic. So these are the base frames done. All we got to do now is figure out our dimensions to make frames for the top wrap those tops in plastic and attach them and, and we'll be done. Well, our cold frames are coming along. Uh, you can see part of the saw is covering up part of it. There's part of one you can see in the background here. So I've got a few pieces of wood left. Um, these are the braces. They're gonna help support the plastic in the lid. And instead of buying any steel L brackets or anything to put on these, I just decided to spend a bit more time and do a lap joint on them. So it does take quite a bit more time. Um, I only have a single blade in this table saw. Ideally a dado head set would be ideal. Uh, it's basically two saw blades with spacers between them. So you can do you know three quarter inch wide cuts in one pass. 
So a couple of passes and it would have been done. Uh, but I'm having to go through it many times just to get all that material out of there. So I've only got a couple left to do. And then I'll be able to assemble all of the frames for the lids for all three cold frames. And get them wrapped in plastic. And we'll see how they're going to work out. Just putting a little bit of uh, wood glue on here. This is an indoor outdoor wood glue because I'm just going to put one screw in each of the ends of these cross braces. wood is splitting a little bit, but with that glue on there, once it dries up, it's going to hold them together anyhow. So all that's left to do now is wrap them in plastic and put them all up in the yard. Okay, so we've got our tops all wrapped in plastic now. These are the last two. Um, I don't know if you can see on the video, this last section is a little bit shorter than the rest. When I took the three frames out, I was a little bit longer than what the garden was, so I had to come back and shorten this last one up by six inches. So I shortened up the cold frame, shortened up the frame for the lid. I wrapped these completely around the lids inside and out. Uh, I've heard that for every layer of plastic you have, it increases the grow zone by one, I think it is. So I've just wrapped the plastic right around the whole tops of these things, stapled them on. And I think we're ready to put this on the last cold frame. And then we'll take the camera outside and you can see what they look like when they're sitting in the garden. Well, there's our cold frames. Okay, so we saw what the cold frames looked like out there in the garden. I think they look good. Uh, it's cloudy out today. and It's only around 40 degrees Fahrenheit out here today. So tomorrow is supposed to be the same temperature, but they're calling for the sun to be out tomorrow. So maybe tomorrow we'll go up with a thermometer and we'll see how much of a difference it makes inside one of those compared to the soil outside. The plastic that I used on those were just the six mil standard vapor barrier plastic that you would use. It's not UV rated. Uh, it actually says on the package, do not store in sunlight. Uh, but I think it's gonna be fine. I've used just standard plastic like that in the past for an outdoor greenhouse. And I used it for three or four years. No issues with the plastic rotting or falling apart. The plastic did come off of it in the spring and get put away. And the tops of these cold frames is no different. They're only gonna be out there for three, four weeks, whatever it takes to get things going. And then the tops will be stored in the greenhouse or something, they'll be out of the sunlight. So I'm sure they'll last three years to come. Uh, if you want to spend the extra money on UV rated plastic for greenhouses and whatnot, you certainly can. Um, I just, from past experience, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, and we'll see as, as time goes on, you know, a couple years down the road or whatever. Um, I'll certainly give you an update as to how long they've been or how many seasons they've been used and how well they're standing up. Uh, cold frames, we had made some cold frames at the start of the season last year and I wanted to add like a temperature check on the end of that video and I, I had not done that yet. So I put some lids on one cold frame here. There's two other frames. 
and I just come out and knocked the snow off of it. It's only been maybe 10 minutes now since I knocked that snow off. It's the only sun we've had for about three weeks, so I haven't had a chance to do this. So I laid a piece of wood on the ground here next to it and another piece on the inside of it. As I said, it's only been about 10 minutes. We got a thermometer here that's set in Fahrenheit. So that piece of wood outside is at that's changing a bit, but there we go. We see we've about 15 on the inside. <laughs> Hasn't changed at all. Oh, a little bit. 20. So a few degrees warmer. 21. If you hit a spot that's in the sun, you can see how much it really jumps when the sun's hitting it inside of there. And there's a spot there where the sun's hitting it outside. So big difference. And that's only after about 10 minutes that that snow has been off that cover. So in just a short period of time, in about 10 minutes, there's a big difference there. So if you've got uh, some full sun hitting those and you've got plants in there, it really changes the temperature. Now this is the yard in the winter. So I think that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching.